This is the Krill Cast. I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm Same Token. And that's not Halo. What no, looking at? no, it's not. <laughs> It almost looks like Doom, doesn't it? Yeah. Almost, yeah. You could call it a Doom clone. Mm -hmm. Or you could call it the Max Doom Killer. Or you could call it, yeah, the Doom Killer. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> well, th that was how it was marketed when it came out. Do you know that, Will? Yeah, I know that it's supposed to be the Doom Killer, but I also remember, you know, a 2016 remake of Doom, and I don't see anything being remade for Marathon just yet. But <laughs> Apparently this guy sits here for like half the video. What is going on here? There we go. Um, <laughs> it's like, let's just have a footage of this guy sitting here with a gun, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a very interesting enemy character right there. That is for sure. <laughs> All right. Does it look like a robe? We'll go on. <laughs> Today is fr Friendly Friday. It's not It's not a Face Off Friday or Faux Friday or any of those mm -hmm. other Fridays. Um, it, so today we're going to discuss the prompt uh, after Same Token tells you about his channel. Uh as to whether or not Microsoft should do a HD remake from the ground up of the Marathon Trilogy using potentially the Slipspace engine or other engines they have available to them, but probably the Slipspace engine. Well, they own the Doom engine. Hold on, Will. Sorry. I've introduced the prompt. Now, same token, <laughs> what do you do on your channel? Yes, yeah, so my channel is all about uh, video games, whether it's Halo lore or commentaries on upcoming game releases. And uh, since we're talking about Marathon, I do want to give a quick shout-out to another channel that actually talks about marathon quite a bit it's called um ghost i'll just type in ghost marathon i think it'll come up I'm trying to remember what this guy's uh channel name let's go channels i'm oh yeah, i'm subscribed to him i'll just find it <laughs> sorry let's see here subscriptions by list it's like ghost virus or ghost something I don't isn't, there a way, isn't there a way to go to the manage and see them all oh dear lord here we go I'll cut some of this out later. Here, we'll here's the dead space. Ghost virus. It is ghost virus. I was right. So this guy did um, Durandal, uh, which is a marathon video, the philosophy and mm -hmm. ambition. He actually covered about why. Oh, and he's doing myth now too. So he's just doing all kinds of old bungee stuff. Mm -hmm. But he did a video where he actually pointed out that Cortana was um, inspired, an inspiration from the marathon trilogy, yep. which was a really interesting video. That is interesting. I can see that because Bungie loves going back to their old games for mm -hmm. ideas. Well, even the marathon symbol, I mean, like that is in Halo, and there's it's a lot cool of idea. echoes throughout Halo uh, mm -hmm. based off this game. So going going back to uh, where we were at before, um, oh, go check out Ghost Virus and also subscribe to Same Token. So mm -hmm. both of those channels are great, uh, but Same Token's here and Ghost Virus is not. So we're gonna talk. To, <laughs> we're gonna talk to Same yeah, Token. We'll Ghost Virus. <laughs> <laughs> So, I guess, why don't you jump into it? How do you feel about an HD remake from the ground up of Marathon? I mean, I'll, I'm, yeah, I, I definitely want to see what Marathon would look like in, uh, you know, without just sprites. I'd love to see what each, um, each enemy type would look like and, like, be reimagined in 3D. It's the kind of game where I personally love the atmosphere and the story um, it just does feel very dated. And so to have that atmosphere and that story reimagined in a modern engine, I think would be really interesting. I'd love to see this enemy in 3D. <laughs> this particular yeah, that, I mean, that enemy would especially be uh, be interesting. I mean, the graphics of Marathon at the time were, they, they kind of it pushed the envelope, really, of especially, obviously, Mac graphics. But I think computer graphics as a whole it was pretty pretty good as far as, as i'm aware you know at the time so i think it, it would be a real opportunity to maybe do it again this is what the initiative is is working on the new microsoft studio you think so yeah the, no i don't know i doubt it <laughs> but the, the cool. secret game well they're saying it's perfect dark and that's a first person shooter so that i mean it, it could be this however my question is does microsoft actually own the rights to this game I don't think they do. No, it's 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 open. It's an open source thing. So Bungie, when they left Mac, um, they kind of retained the rights to this, but kind of didn't, and so they had to release it on PC. So they did it by making it open source, and then a bunch of people that modded the files allowed it to come to PC, and and then it kind of went into the general. Um, what is it? GNU general. I can't remember what that stands for, um, but it's general use at this point. I think the original code. 
Yeah. I don't know. I think the original games are probably fair game. I think, like, there's probably so far that you could legally upgrade it through things like mods before you start getting into questionable ter territory. Like, if you were to start selling the whole Marathon trilogy completely remastered, then it would probably be a violation of copyright. Um, but if you were to release, uh, I don't know, bring it into a different engine and improve it a little bit, as long as you have the source code yourself to put it in, then th that might be okay. But it wouldn't be the HD remake that I'd want. Yeah, I would love to see Microsoft throw some money at Bungie and say, do this. I'd love, yeah. I'd love, even even if someone could just buy the IP or, mm -hmm. um, you know, someone from, you might have heard of Double Alt, the, um, I think it was, it was Greg Kirkpatrick, maybe? He, basically, um, some guys from Bungie um, left Bungie around the end of Marathon 2 to start their own company called Double Ought. And they were the guys who made the Marathon Infinity story. Oh, and okay. so it would be great to get some of the original guys back in, whether it's under that company, which I don't think is, is currently active anymore, hmm. uh, or under another company, it would be good to get them back to do a HD remake. That would be ideal. Mm -hmm. But realistically, it'd probably be the IP would have to be purchased and then it would be a different developer altogether. Yeah, yeah, I would be curious like where the rights sit currently because I know there were some rights tied up with Apple and Mac, some rights were tied up with Bungie, some rights were tied up with Microsoft. The whole acquisition process left this game like shattered as to who owns the rights to it, which is why I think it's been allowed to be open sourced. I'm so glad they allowed it to be open sourced though because there's a lot of old games where the rights are no longer with any particular party but at the same time, one of the parties or multiple parties have said, no, you, no one can use this game. So basically, you can never play it again. Like mm. like uh, GoldenEye. <laughs> the yes, original yeah. GoldenEye. Yeah. Well, it just sucks about that. There is an actual HD remake of that game. They just never released it because they couldn't figure out the rights. Yes. And that's where rights... That's what scares me. I mean, that's... Uh, video games right now, we're kind of... Uh, at a time where all the video games that we feel matter are kind of relatively still available. There's a lot of classic game consoles which still work. So if you really want to play a particular game, you probably can. But there's going to come a point where all this old technology breaks down. And if you don't have a port of some kind, you'll never be able to see that game again. If no one's recorded any footage of it, then no one will know it existed other than in text. Which, with yeah. things like the Scott Pilgrim HD um, port, I have some faith that these good games that have existed and, and still exist to some extent on the digital front can be, with a community effort, brought back out. I think the sad part is the games without the community, and I'm just hoping mm -hmm. that Marathon has that. Yeah, yeah, yeah this too. game would get lost to history if they don't ever do anything with it. It could. I mean, Doom is an example of game of a game which has been so successful over time <laughs> that we can probably rely on being able to play the original DOS box version of Doom. Mm -hmm. uh, but Marathon, it, it was Doom for Mac at the time, and everyone kind of compared it to Doom. But then, you know, Doom just kept getting bigger and bigger and more recognized. And Marathon, after Halo came out, just faded to obscurity. Um, yeah. I, mean, well, they released... I feel like if Marathon had jumped to the Xbox as well, it, it, it would still be around today, but it never made that jump, stayed on the Mac. It, it didn't, and that, that Marathon uh, Durandal, um, the the one which was released on the 360, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure, I don't. I haven't seen the numbers uh, for that, but I don't know how successful that was, because obviously it Wait, was that actually got on the That got put on the 360? Yeah, it was, uh, so it was a... Um, it was like a, an, you know, with the arcade games that they really that was around when it was quite popular. That was actually my first, now well, first proper playthrough of Marathon because like I used to play it on my my dad's old Mac, um, but I'd never really like take it seriously or go through it because well I had Halo. But <laughs> you know when I when it came out on the arcade, I actually gave it a full playthrough and thought you know this, with the time it was made in mind, this is actually a really interesting game. I mean, the lore behind Marathon, uh, when you kind of, it's like you have to kind of uh, to beat it out of the game a little bit in the terminals. It's not handed to you. So with that in mind, it's actually, if you're willing to go through the process, it's a really interesting backstory. I've, I've read through some of the scripts. I actually found the AI, um, the two AIs duking it out over the, the future of the universe to be very interesting. 
<laughs> it's yes, very Halo it, too. It is. Yeah, I mean, even the um, there's a lot of uh, references also, even not just with Halo, but there's references back to uh, their previous game, Pathways into Darkness. Yep. And I think they might be connected because I don't know how you're supposed to say it, but the Jaro, the ancient alien race, exists in both universes. And when I saw that playing Marathon after having played Pathways before, um, I thought that was like, wow, they're connected. And they were, for a long time, people thought Marathon was connected to Halo, uh, but that was proved not true. But at the end of Halo 3, people were like, that's when Marathon starts. You know, you yeah. wake up in the... Mm -hmm. Um, and I think they, they were going to do that with Mar at the end of Marathon 2, just a little tidbit. Their original plans for the end of Marathon 2 was you'd, you would start back on Marathon 1, and it would be a loop. Okay. I think you could almost take this and make the Marathon trilogy, if you were to mess around with the lore a little bit, be the ancient humans if you took a long enough time and like reworked some of the enemies. Oh, totally, actually. Yeah, you t you could easily do that. I mean, that would you would have to really kind of retcon Marathon's lore quite a bit. Um, but there's no reason why you couldn't just take the, the basic atmosphere of Marathon and the whole concept of the rogue AI and the ancient, the even more ancient alien races. You know, maybe <laughs> mm -hmm. the Jaro are actually the precursors. There you go. Could be, yeah, really since cool. they still haven't defined that the precursors are or are not the Flood. No, it's it's very murky. Yeah, I tried to kind of make it less murky in a video, but I kind of just you, you you kind of have to fill in a lot of the blanks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of like that about uh, the Halo lore is it's open ended enough that you can kind of come to your own conclusions. And I think Marathon is just ripe for a remake. But mm -hmm. you just mentioned Pathways into Darkness. Maybe they should do that first, so they're not taking on three games all at once just do a new Pathways into Darkness remake and see how that does before you touch Marathon. They could do. I mean, the, the thing I would have with a Pathways remake is um, while it was was quite good at the time, um, the what would happen is it's because it's just a corridor shooter and there is a, there is a backstory, but that's pretty much these days all it has. There's mm -hmm. not much in the way of level design. Like, I don't find the levels that interesting. Um, like I said at the time, pretty cool. Um, but it was never hailed as like the pinnacle of of uh, art as a game um, level wise. The art was in the um, the monsters and stuff, the weird death animations, and they, they were great, really cool at the time. But I think that's where Marathon excels because that was where they first started seeing um, that when you can overlap levels and you can texture map different sections of the levels. Um, then you can start using it as an art form. So you can have corridors which go up on top of each other, big atriums with multiple floors and jumping about. I mean, Marathon Infinity is where that kind of, I think the final level, the final proper level of Marathon Infinity was like loads of different levels with a massive atrium in the middle. And, uh, and I think that's where you could recreate it in HD and it would have its, its, um, its atmosphere and feel. Whereas... Um, recreating pathways into darkness um you wouldn't really be able to capture the same atmosphere i don't think in in like full 3d okay so what is this then <laughs> this is pathways into darkness uh spiritual reimagining see what, what i like this? how they started outside because that's something they couldn't do originally yeah because like you you i guess yeah you start after crashing next to a pyramid and you have to what get to the center of the pyramid or the top of the pyramid maybe to destroy there's something that lives beneath it like an ancient alien that you're trying not to wake up and you have to kill it before it wakes up oh my gosh it's, it's the primordial yeah <laughs> it's all connected all the monsters inside are actually the flood why don't we just why don't we just retcon um pathways and marathon just to make them halo games you you could you actually could although this weird monster that would never work monster, man. <laughs> like that is, that, that's, that's actually pretty. really amazing I can't believe it's that. So it's weird. Not, that is so weird. Oh my god! The, it almost uh, looks like the flood. It could be the flood, though. You just gotta retcon it a little better. Mm -hmm. But you know, going back to marathon, Sorry. I think I would love to see um, the marathon as a universe of its own. Even if yeah. like we say remake, I mean, you could go as far as to to actually just take the core story because it was the first Bungie game which had a really like 
it was a trilogy and it had an in-depth story throughout some quite some of it quite abstract i think nowadays all the abstract concepts that really come out especially near the end of marathon one and certainly marathon infinity you could totally reimagine those in like hd graphics see if somebody's done it mm -hmm. I mean, have you if you guys played Marathon Infinity before the campaign, the story mode? Or whatever. I don't think I played Infinity. I played You're one, two, Durin Dahl, and three. Let's so three, I... three would be Infinity. That's what. Yeah, that's okay. Then I've played. Was. Okay, then I've, I've played. It's basically, that one a bit. if you're following the story, it gets really like basically. I think there's like um. Oh yeah, yeah, I played this. Yeah, I played it recently, and I tried to actually follow the story, and um. So at the end of Marathon Two, I think what happens is you kind of. Um, you you win, but you don't win because like this ancient alien wakes up, essentially, and uh, is about to, to consume the universe or something. So Infinity is where you're being sent Blood. to different times, different realities, or different versions of reality, mm -hmm. where you have to um, uh, just f find the reality, which is the one where no one dies or everything is okay, and you defeat the the, the beast at the end or whatever. Uh, and that was so abstract. And with Marathon's graphics, I think it was very constrained in how they could actually tell that story visually. It was kind of just told through terminals, and you were kind of expected to be able to remember all that information and internalize it and think, yeah, okay. <laughs> but most people probably just basically from the terminals extracted, I need to go here to complete this level, and that, that then leave it there, because by the end of it, that was where I was at. Um, <laughs> so I think it would be nice to, to have... Um, to hold my hand just a little bit more and and get my my stupid brain through the story because I think there's something really interesting there. It's one of those situations where you're just scratching the surface and you're like, there's so much interesting stuff here, but I don't understand. So I'd like a I'd like that to be the focus in a in a 3D remake. I mean, if there's two like space universes other than Star Wars that were really fleshed out, had great stories, and just seemed to be timeless, it was. Mass Effect trilogy when it was still going on and Halo. Imagine if Marathon could build a universe like that where you had more than just like I think Bungie could go back, revisit this franchise and build it into what they wanted Destiny to be almost without the MMO aspect. Yeah, I, I'd love to. I mean, I think uh, it'd be nice to see where the the original uh, Marathon developers how they would imagine the game. Yeah. Now. yeah. Sorry, I yeah, said Bungie, would... but I meant like the people that worked on it originally. Well, no, no, no you're right. They they were Bungie, yeah. I, I think like they, um, I think with these old games, there's always a certain amount of being restricted. They had this epic story and journey in their their minds, and there's only so much you can do because then you have to fight with the computer to get that those concepts out. Uh, so it'd be nice. Now we're pretty much limitless. You know, you're limited mostly by your money uh, when it comes to <laughs> developing. Uh, AAA game certainly. Um, so with that in mind, you know, it'd be interesting to see what they'd want to do. Um, I mean, whether it's with the slip space engine, or you know, whether it's even with something like Unreal, or mm -hmm. even with Unity, it'd be. I think they could yeah. create something really cool. I mean, Marathon would be the kind of game where they'd have to play it pretty safe if they were doing a remake. So I wouldn't be surprised if they went for um, for one of your, you know, your slightly more open engines. Yeah. Or if Microsoft actually does own the rights, they could just make it in the the ID or the Doom engine. Yeah, that that'd be great. I mean, if they did it in, um, yeah, the what they call it now, they that would look great. I think that could actually, um, although Marathon and Doom originally were very different atmospheres, mm -hmm. um, I think now the the its engine could definitely be used to bring Marathon's atmosphere out. That would look great. Um, it's Imagine. just whether. Marathon 2020, like how Doom 2016. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It's so, like, it's so hard though because it doesn't make any business sense. But as a consumer, I want to buy it already. Yes. I don't even care. I just want another space shooter like Halo. <laughs> Something that's as good as Halo. I would love it. Yeah, with the that element of mystery, which is you know, uh, there's a lot of that in Marathon. You lose that with MMOs like Destiny. I never felt like. There was enough of an atmosphere to warrant my curiosity, like there was with Halo. The thing yeah. is, I really enjoyed the game, the gunplay and the gameplay in Mar. And, uh, I'm sorry, not Marathon and uh, Destiny. But yeah, at the end of Destiny One, it's like, what did I learn? Like, what was the point of any of that? 
<laughs> <laughs> I think I agree. I think I, I think Destiny for me, I, Destiny's a great game. It's really fun. It is. Um, and I do love a lot of the backstory. I mean, I, I love Bungie games. But um, I think you're right in that when you're seeing other people walk around and you know that they're like for instance they're they're like multiple levels ahead of you you don't feel like the story that you're about to complete is being is happening for the first time you mm -hmm. feel like a hundred different guardians have done the same thing and you are just happen you're in the queue basically you, you know you're in, a, you're in a long queue just waiting for your turn to to do this element of the story whereas in halo and in marathon you always in linear games like that you always feel like you are the most important thing in the universe yes. and you're a hero and you embody that and you go through that for the first time you know when other people are doing it simultaneously but you don't know that exactly so like for me marathon presents this level of mystery that the halo series presented and it does it in a very very intricate and detailed way it's just they had it all in terminals kind of like how halo there's this deeper story in the terminals but you still get enough of an air of mystery in the game that you want to go back and look at the terminals in marathon it was forced you had to go to the terminals mm -hmm. yeah 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 that's that, that's that's the one part about a marathon remake that unless you could either do it on the cheap and kind of just bring it into a modern engine and kind of just have it as it was and you would that wouldn't really net that much money. I mean, they kind of semi. They didn't. I don't know how much they changed the engine. I think it was kind of just using basically what LF1, similar to what LF1 did, mm -hmm. uh, when they brought it to the 360. So it looked very much like classic marathon. Uh, that might be the only way financially to just port the game as is. I think if you were to to bring it for a modern audience, it would be not even a remaster. It would be a reboot. It would be like a reimagining where That's you exactly take the base I mean. story and yeah. atmosphere, yeah, and then you have to, you basically just have to just ditch everything that exists for a marathon other than the base story and the atmosphere and then recreate that. Um, I don't know, how how would they, how do you think they would tell Marathon's story if, if not through mostly terminals? Would there be other people that are voiced? Well, I, it's pretty, in my mind, you could take a Cortana-like character to give you a lot of the backstory as you're going through the initial part of the game, right? You could have, instead of having terminals tell it to you, you could have somebody talking to you. Yes, so you things. actually, Leela, who's the initial AI that talks to you, she's actually talking to you through an earpiece. Right. That's what I'm thinking. I do that, and also like in you know, internal monologue, the, your own character could explain some of what's going on as well. And then during the terminals where they're explaining things, I mean, we're in the age of VR, right? So you could literally have your eyes, sh everything shuts down, and you're seeing what they're talking about happen. And then instead of having everything explained via text, you could have actual sequences play out in your VR headset in the game in front of you as they're explaining it so it visualizes the world to you okay you've sold me i want marathon to now be a <laughs> vr game as good as half-life alex yes. <laughs> that's what i expect now it can't just be a game it has to be a vr game now it could have both you could you could have a vr option where it's more immersive oh, I, I don't know i think i think vr games have to like for the best vr games are vr only where everything <laughs> fully feels commit. like you're in the world there you but, go bungie <laughs> the thing is, if you go if you go far enough, I have to say, when we're talking about like having Leela be an AI which guides you through the start of the game, um, if you if you update enough of Marathon, we might just end up making Halo one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it'd be a be different a franchise thing, like, with a different point. story, and but it would be a very it would be different, yeah. And it'd be it different be enough that you and if you changed enough of the, the biggest thing is you don't want to match Halo. You want the, so you almost would have to pick a color palette that would not be identical to Halo to make this. Yeah, I mean, like, we'd have to decide between Marathon 2's like bright colors versus Marathon 1's like really muted. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think maybe Pathways into Darkness would be a better start because you could reimagine that entirely and make it a slightly different game reimagined with all the things we're talking about. And if that does well, boom, Marathon Trilogy's next. It's funny because, I mean, all the these Bungie games, the initial ones, were created by a bunch of college uh, graduates uh, who, uh, some already, I think, still in college, who were just eating pizza in essentially a, a kind of frat-style house. And they were like, you know, it would be so cool if there was, like, 
a sleeping alien underneath a pyramid. <laughs> and these ideas just happen to be really great. And that's what Bungie have built off to make Halo. So maybe we just need to go back to that. Maybe we need to take all of the, the, um, the executives at Bungie and then stick them back in their like their apartment their original apartment lock them in there for like a year and say come up with something amazing <laughs> oh, let's yeah. go back to college because <laughs> <laughs> like um jason jones and uh and alex seropian at the start they were kind of just coming up with so many ideas um and when you're obviously when you're running a business it, it changes a little bit the dynamic of everything changes a bit so being able to go back to their original ideas um, and then basically just picking them up. So like you said, remaking Pathways into Darkness would be quite an interesting idea. It's the kind of idea that would, would not really fly in, um, in a focus group necessarily or like in a corporate space where you're coming up with ideas mm -hmm. because a lot of games now, they're very distilled and sometimes the, the ideas that I like the most are the, some you know, wacky ideas that have come up by college students. Yeah. <laughs> I like this random flag in the middle. Yeah, what <laughs> is that? Is that is that like is that hammer and sickle? It is. Yeah. In Path of I thought it was like the Nazis that were. Oh, it... <laughs> it's quite interesting that someone's taking the time to do that, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This like is... I, I really applaud that. This is what I'm saying. Though. Like you could take Pathways into Darkness, make that a VR game easily. Yes. I think that would be a terrifying VR game. Yeah. That would especially be really, could, really scary. Especially if you could make the monsters more realistic. Oh, yeah. gosh. Even the original, because in the original one you're playing and it's like in a little... Um, it doesn't even take over your whole screen. It's just like in a little window. It's just terrifying when you hear like the squeak of those tongue things. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyways, do you guys have uh, anything else you want to say about uh, Marathon or Pathways in Darkness? Other than I hope they make, remake them. Uh, no, I don't. No, I mean, yeah, like, I'm the same. I think, like, seeing a Doom 2016 killer, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and release it on the Mac. No, I'm just Only kidding. on the Mac. <laughs> bring oh, back I thought you did. <laughs> no, it'd probably, it'd probably be more likely to be exclusive to, like, a Steam VR thing. <laughs> like, have, like, Alex was. Or... The irony that that's yeah. the last thing a Mac can play now. Yeah. <laughs> As always, and I want to thank Same Token in case this yes, is the last video we do with him for quite some time. So thank you for coming on this podcast. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me on. It's been great fun. And since this is the Friday episode anyways, it makes sense to thank you on this one. <laughs> As always, I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And I'm Same Token. Thank you, guys. And we will see you on the next Curlcast. After you subscribe to Same Token. <laughs>